the Game of Life podcast coming at you, where we bring to you the behind the scenes lives of NBA players, business savvy entrepreneurs, and top level performers in all fields of personal development. The podcast that helps you become the best version of you. The Game of Life, David Nurse. Here we go. Ah, another week. What a blessing. What a blessing to be here. Mondays, I love them. All about perspective. So welcome back to another week of the Game of Life with David Nurse, yours truly, where we bring to you behind the scenes life of elite NBA players, the habits, tricks, biohacks of top level performers inside the minds of Fortune 500 business savvy entrepreneurs, the latest from cutting edge companies, changing the world in the performance field, how to live an adventurous, exciting life, how to find joy in every day, find your life calling and purpose, and just overall, how to help you become the best version of you. That's what we are bringing to you every week on The Game of Life. Okay, we've got a great one for you this week. So if you like sleep, then you are going to love this week's guest. Before I tell you who it is, he's literally one of the original trailblazers in the sleep study field, rated one of the top sleep experts in the world. His clients have included the U.S. Department of Defense, the National Hockey League, National Football League, NBA, MLB, Major League Soccer, Australian Football League, national soccer programs all over the world and also the olympics the national olympic committees that's uh, pretty much every sport you can ever think of yeah i would say he's pretty good we are very blessed to have patrick byrne as our guest this week on the game of life i wanted to do something a little different this week and read to you guys a really cool note i got from a listener in australia hamish Hamish, Hamish, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Okay, here it goes. David, I really love the variety of high-level performers you have brought on the podcast. It's cool to see how much passion these people have for their fields of interest. I'm learning a lot. Keep it coming. Cheers, mate. That's awesome. That's really cool to hear. I know for I know for a fact that I'm not great at this podcast stuff. I'm a work in progress. I'm getting better, trying to improve, but... To give listeners all over the world the ability to learn and grow in their own lives and find that excitement and joy, that means a ton to me. Thank you, Hamish. Appreciate it, mate. Uh, Send reviews, notes like that. I love getting them. All right. Gotta warn you before we jump into this podcast. If you listen to this, you are about to increase your sleeping ability and have much better rest each night. I know I say a lot of things are game changers, but this, yeah, it is. You're about to find out how to get the best night's sleep, what athletes at the highest level are doing to increase sleep, the optimal hours for sleep, how to effectively nap, and basically, through sleep, increase value to every single day. Hope you have your pillows handy. Let's go. All right. We have Patrick Byrne on the podcast, Global Consultants. Global consultant on the science of sleep and fatigue, um, just a sports science guru on sleep. Uh, Patrick, how you doing? Just great. Good morning. Yeah, thank you for coming on this. This is this is something that I am super passionate about. And being in the morning, I just had a great night's sleep actually, and I'm really looking forward to hearing everything in depth about it. So I keep getting better and better at my night's sleeps. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the audience a quick background on you and. How you got interested in the science of sleep? Sure. Uh, sleep, sleep science is actually a really new science. You know, one of the chapters in uh, my upcoming book is called uh, Sleep Comes Late to the Science Party. And it really kind of, uh, uh, chrono- in a chronological way, it shows how sleep science came about. And quite frankly, most of what we know about sleep, we've, we've learned in the last 10, 15 years. So mm-hmm. it's very, very new. Um, in fact, when uh, Watson and Crick published their data on on the structure of DNA that set off a whole uh, new area of science, sleep sleep ha- sleep science research hadn't even started yet. Mm-hmm. Right. So ev- everything we know about sleep, we learned it certainly in my lifetime. Um, but then one day, um, I, 
I had a young nephew who um, incidentally played uh, against Steve Nash in high school. Oh, wow. And uh, and so, you know, at the championship game, he got to guard uh, Steve. <laughs> tough, <laughs> tough job. Yeah, so Steve went off, say. Steve went, yeah, Steve went off to Santa Clara, and we know his, his strong okay. history there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and my nephew went off to, it's called British Columbia Institute of Technology, and, and, and went into forestry, which was his passion. Mm-hmm. And so when he graduated, he, you know, within two months, he was just, he loved it so much. He was working long, long hours. You know, one Friday night, driving home from work, he just fell asleep. Drove his car off a cliff and died. Oh my gosh! And because I, you know, I had such a, uh, I had done a lot of work in occupational health and safety, I started asking this question: well, How can that happen? Why aren't we talking about this? Is this a workplace issue? I, so I just got really interested in it from trying to prevent uh, work-related accidents. And so I, I, there was no place to learn. They weren't teaching it. In fact, they rarely even teach it in medical schools now. So what I did was I just did a, and this was a, was a two-year project. What I did was I tried to find out who were the researchers in the world, the best researchers, and what were they doing in this area. So I got a hold of guys like John Caldwell, who at the time was the, um, Dr. Caldwell, who was the head of the U.S. Air Force um, fatigue countermeasures program. So they did a lot of sleeper research for the Air Force. And, and, and uh, you know, all the travel that the pilots were doing. And, and so I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from Steve Hirsch, who is a Pentagon medical officer and devised programs that are used now by every airline and railroad in, in North America wow. to prevent fatigue-related accidents. You know, I worked with um, um, Brian Villa at Washington State University, a great researcher, um, you know, and, and more recently with, with uh, Maurice O'Hayan at Stanford University Medical School, you know, and, and, and some real pioneers in the field. People like Daniel Kripke from University of California, San Diego, who invented in the nineteen mid nineteen seventies the, the very first sleep watch. Wow. So, what I did was I just immersed myself in what was going on uh, globally in terms of sleep research and where people were at, and just pulled all the pieces together and realized, okay, you know, I I got to learn from the the smartest people on the planet, and so that's what I did. Man, that's so. You're you're basically a pioneer of sleep. I mean, when you started, there was there's really nothing on it, and I mean, you've seen it grow no, to where it is. Right, right, wow. and, and it's, it's just grown exponentially. You know, and I think, uh, and what so what happened was I cre- I created a small consulting business here in uh, Vancouver um, to uh, and work with industries to, in uh, you know from Australia and the U.S. and Canada yeah. to try to prevent. Uh, fatigue related accidents yeah. and then one day I got a phone call from um, uh, Vancouver Canucks where his office wow. was literally across the bridge mm-hmm. and they just had a new general manager president come in a guy named Mike Gillis and w- splashed across the, the front pages of the newspapers here was his commitment to deal with fatigue and travel issue for, the, for his team so he called me up and he said, look, what do you know about this? And I said, you know what, that's interesting. I said, I've only worked in industry, but the same principles apply to sports. So he said, well, come on down. I'll give you half an hour. You come talk to our team and tell us what you're doing and we'll see what we're, we're doing. So I go down there and the, the, you know, the ownership is in there, the management are in there, the trainers are in there, the coaching staff are in there. And he says, he stands up and he says, this is Pat Perrin. He looks at me, he's got 30 minutes. So <laughs> that, was, <laughs> oh, that, was my, that was my introduction. He, he's a great guy. We've, we've stayed friends. Yeah, oh, good luck. But, 30 uh, minutes. Go. Yeah. Uh, an hour and a half later. And he turned to me and said, okay, when can you, when can you start? Wow. And so man. that was the introduction, I think, for any professional sports team anywhere, certainly North America, probably the world, that they really started looking at serious technology and serious systems to uh, keep the players fresh and, and get, get better sleep. That's, that's really interesting because I, I know teams are starting to like just almost now put more and more emphasis on sleep. And like in the past, especially being in, in the NBA, it'd be late night game, late night flight up the next day, practice, have like not tracking it at all. It was crazy. Right. And, and so, yeah, teams are – and the thing is that often teams are looking for a, quote, a silver bullet. They're looking for yeah, an, easy, right. an easy way to, to fix a problem. And, you know, basically what I, I say to teams, look, this is a process. It took us two or three seasons to really get the team on board and the players on board, you know, and, and to really find some creative solutions to, to their to their problems. And, but what I see teams doing today is, you know, sort of, it's sort of the equivalent of sort of handing a player a pamphlet on how to get into physical shape. 
say, here, go off and do yep. something. Yeah. Right. And, and the players can't do it. They can't manage it themselves mm-hmm. because they don't have control over all of the issues, particularly the travel issues and some of the medical issues. Um, and what's interesting about the NBA and uh, what attracts me to is they're, they, they're very similar to the National Hockey League. In fact, most people actually don't know this, but the NBA was started by some of the owners of the National Hockey League. Wow! To to, to fill their arenas, right? and so you while the while the hockey teams were on on the road, uh, the NBA teams would would be would be at home. Wow. And, and so you still see that today. You still see hockey teams and NBA teams mm-hmm. playing out of the, the the same arenas for sure. And yep. and they play the same, largely the same season. They all yep. play eighty two games, forty one, you know, forty one in the road, forty one at home. They play back to back games. All very very similar issues. The difference I think in the NBA is that they ride their horses. Um, uh, a lot longer than the NHL do. You know, they, you, right. you go to an NBA game and they're playing the same guys, man, most of the game. Right? And so it's harder, I think, on them. We're in the National Hockey League. You know, they got you know, they got twenty guys on the ice. Right? You know that they rotate in and out, and so they're not having to to um, to play them as as as, uh, as often. So it's it's probably a bit easier on them physically and and um, and mentally. In the National Hockey League, although they'll probably disagree with that, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting hit like that, body checked yeah, every night, yeah, yeah, and, and so, uh, yeah, and so, what we did at, with the Canucks was we introduced two new concepts to to the travel issue. Mm-hmm. What I was able to obtain from the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force is what's called their mission planning software. So when they do bombing raids across the world. Uh, they have software that can predict h- highly accurately predict the fatigue of the pilots wow. based on t- time zone travel and the amount of sleep and the quality of sleep that they're getting. So I um, got a license to use the software and eventually bought the commercial rights to it. Um, and it, it, so it's very powerful. Mm-hmm. So what we and, and and the other p- part of it too was we created I created the very first FDA approved sleep and fatigue watch. Um, which has never been available to uh, consumers. It's only been available to teams and to, and to companies. Um, and and so with those two combinations, what we did uh, for the Canucks, for example, was we put the watches on the players for a couple weeks at a time, beginning of the season. So we knew what the player sleep patterns look like. Mm-hmm. So we could, without revealing any information to, uh, about the player sleep to anyone, so the coaches never knew what the players were doing. Right, no one right, knew right. except myself and the players. But what we created was what I call the team sleep pattern. So the team knew, on average, how long it took players to actually get to sleep after games, particularly back to back games. How long, you know, how long they could sleep in in the morning? Who napped? So we created this pattern of what their sleep looked like. So what we did was we took that and superimposed it onto the Air Force mission planning software Mm -hmm. and instead of putting uh, what the software allows you to do is to pick any point in time and it'll tell you how fatigued the players are or the or the or the the, uh, athletes are so instead of putting a bombing mission in baghdad we would write in game in new york yeah, <laughs> a little different. Yeah. yeah, but it's 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 just it's the location, right, yeah, and the timing exactly. of it. And so we would put at the beginning of the season their entire eighty two game eighty two game schedule through that process. And what we discovered was most seasons it'd be ten or twelve games that the players would be too, probably too fatigued to perform very mm-hmm. well. And so then we started to get creative, right? And so okay, what can we do to to, to keep them fresh. What can we do? And, and particularly in back-to-back games, what surprised us was we were able to actually plan a week ahead. So, uh, so for example, very common, certainly from West Coast teams, they would go, they'd play a game in New York or Nashville, and then they'd get a day off, and they'd go down and play Tampa Bay and, and Florida back-to-back games. Yep. And so because you really can't do – and the NBA has the same kind of travel rules that the National Hockey League has, which is you can't fly the day of a game. Right. So they have to they have to fly after their after their game in in, in Tampa Bay and go to to go to Florida. Um, so so what we did is we said, okay, you know, if your game in Nashville, your game in New York, you don't have to fly all the way down after that game. You can have the option of staying over in New York or Nashville, wherever the game is, and get some rest and sleep in, and then fly that next day. 
company. And what we discovered, that strategy was very, very effective in terms of keeping the players fresh because they went into those back-to-back games with no sleep debt. Man, that's 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 awesome. And I, I know teams are starting to look at that uh, now in the NBA, like just last season. Um, yeah. Right. But they're guessing. I'd be, guessing, be, right. Be pl- they're guessing. <laughs> yeah. at it, you know? and, and there's there's brilliant software around that can actually do that for them and predict it exactly. You don't have to guess. And you and the the great thing about the software as well is you can actually get in and model differences. You can say, okay, well, what if we stayed over here? How's that going to affect this game? Right? Wow. What if we let the player sleep in another hour? What if we did this? What if we gave him a day off? You can go in and model it, and and it'll kick up the answer for it it's it's a phenomenal wow, man will that technology be available to the public i would absolutely love to see it, it. i'm a nut for that yeah it, it is available um it's it's used uh, i retired from my company that bought it the company was uh-huh. called fatigue fatigue science yeah. and i retired a couple of years ago to go to uh, private practice myself and to do and we'll talk a bit bit later about some of the artificial intelligence programs around sleep that i'm working with at stanford nice. um but uh, yeah, the software is available through Fatigue Science, um, and most teams actually contract it out to them rather than try to do it themselves. But you can buy a copy of the software and you can do it yourself. Okay, man, that's yeah. I, we we got to talk more about that for sure. Um, you were you were just touching on like ten to twelve games and just the difference in mm-hmm. like how they won't be sleep debt if if uh, mm-hmm. if they stay over those 10 to 12 games can be the difference in making the playoffs not making the playoffs winning losing games um i know i know in your book you talk about that in in your book inconvenient sleep you talk about how yeah. why teams win and lose and can be based on sure. approach to sleep oh. Oh, simple. You know, the same. The NBA, same as the National Hockey League, and quite frankly, most leagues. And getting in and out of the playoffs is is uh, you know a matter of a couple of games, sometimes one game in an entire season. And so the the ownership and the manage, senior management at the Vancouver Canucks that I worked with for seven seasons mm-hmm. came to came to me. I didn't ask them. They came to me and said, you know, the system you put in place gives us five extra road wins a year gosh that's huge yeah it is and 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 it's just and and it's it's nothing magical it's just making smarter decisions yeah having good data and making smarter decisions that's all all there is to it and you know the the canucks because they're on the west and west coast teams have a harder travel schedule than you know than east coast teams right but just because of the direction of travel and and vancouver's you know much like some of the la teams it's quite isolated in you know, in terms of where the other teams in the league are. And so they historically, they had terrible, terrible road, road wins, uh, uh, road records. Um, and after a couple of seasons working with them, they won back-to-back president's trophies and led the entire <laughs> National Hockey League in road wins. <laughs> and in, the, the ownership and management were so afraid, literally were so afraid that the other NHL teams would get a, a, a hold of the system we had developed that they bought the exclusive rights to work with our company and our software for like five seasons. Wow, man, that is huge results. So I couldn't even talk. I couldn't even talk to other NHL teams while we were under that agreement. Okay, so we need to get you with every NBA team like right away. They'll probably get taken scooping up by one of the teams and won't be able to work with anybody else. But they, <laughs> they, that's the, to the max five road wins a year. I mean, people would pay millions and millions for that. Well, I wish the Canucks had, but they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you need to do. Yeah, take percentages. But, of but, wins. but again, it's it, it's using really good validated technology. Um, and, yeah. and making really smart decisions around it, and 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 it's available, right? If teams want to do it, man, that's that's huge. Um, yeah, kind of uh, transitioning on that too. Like people yeah. don't understand like how important tracking sleep is. Like I can see like all the athletes, they're tracking their workload, they're tracking their food intake, macros, micros, everything like that. But no one really tracks sleep and realizes, okay, my body is the most prepared to be function at its highest level. My mind's the most sharpest it can be functioning. Like why, how, how do you, how do we go from the, like you said, like the teams, they say they get it, they get the pamphlet. How do we really give it to them? How do they implement it and actually get it? Right. So here's the challenge with sleep, particularly for athletes, is um, th- because the science is so new, there's a lot of garbage technology out there. There are a lot of companies that sell yeah. um, that sell technology that claim 
that they they're measuring sleep, right. um, and they don't, and they don't. Um, and the, the way uh, Dr. Ohian at, Ohian at Stanford University explained it to me, he says, "Look, sleep is in the brain, and your brain is not on your wrist." <laughs> good point. That's right. Good. <laughs> And and so Daniel Kripke, Dr. Kripke, who invented the original sleep watch um, and, and the original algorithms for it, uh, you know, he basically says, well, not basically, he told me specifically that all of these consumer products on the market, I don't care if it's Fitbit or Whoop or any of those things, he says mm-hmm. they just have not have not been validated, and and the information that you, that comes off them comes off the watch, he says, is it's about as uh, um, what's his exact language? Is it's about as basically as useful as a fortune cookie. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. they give, you know wow. the, the great thing about apps and and phones is you can create a lot of bling and a lot of charts and it looks impressive. Right. But this but the the, the science just isn't there and and it, so the tracking sleep is one thing but. For me, I, there are three major reasons why athletes don't get sleep that need to be covered off. Okay. What one is is just their lifestyle issues and having them understand that the choices they make outside of the team environment, uh, how that affects not only their performance during games but their recovery. Yeah. And and with the kind that there are some FDA approved sleep watches that can actually help them do that, but it's very difficult to do that themselves because sleep is so new. They often they'll get numbers, they don't know what to do with it. Right. So they need look, they need some they need some hand holding in, in terms of of doing that. But that's part of what I call an educational process. So the, the vast majority of teams that try to work on the sleep issue. Um, their their whole thing is either give them a sleep watch or have, bring in an expert to tell them how important sleep is, and then they walk away from the issue. And so that's not really helpful to players. My experience is they need some ongoing hand holding uh, to be to be really effective and to, mm-hmm. and to really convince them that you know that sleep is important. So that's one aspect. The second aspect really has to do, and we talked a little bit about this already, which is team scheduling. The decisions the team yep. and the league make uh, around. Uh, around travel and the travel decisions and the scheduling of games the, da- the data we collected from for the Vancouver Canucks over seven seasons the Canucks were actually went to the National Hockey League schedulers and got them to fix some of the pro- inherent problems that were built into the schedule for them wow. and so um, one of the things that we discovered through through the data collection was uh, when the Canucks used to go on road trips from the west coast and east coast they would bounce from different time zones so they would go to the East Coast, mountain time, back to the East Coast, back to the West Coast. They had them all over the place. And so we convinced the National Hockey League to only schedule the, the Canuck road games in one time zone, which they have done now for the last number of years. So they go to the East Coast, play their games, come back home. That's great. So there's, there are lots of ways that you can and, – and even when I was working in Major League Baseball, we discovered mm-hmm. – and if you know if you – you need tra- in Major League Baseball, when you travel from the West Coast to the East Coast, you get a day off. Yeah. Right. But the Major League Baseball had been using those day off, days off to fill in rain delay, uh, uh, rainouts. Oh, man. Yeah. So we said to the West Coast teams we were working with, like, don't let them do that. Like, push back on that because that's, that's a recovery day. Man. Yeah. So there's so lots of lessons that you can be learned. And and the third area is really the player's own biology. And so uh, sleep is a, a really important brain function. And it's affected by things like sleep disorders. And there are over mm-hmm. 90 medical sleep disorders. It's affected by uh, your mental health. And, you know, whether there's depression and all kinds of other, um, and, and I've worked with, worked with players, I, you know, I worked with uh, Rick Ripian, he was one of the Canuck players who had a huge amount of depression and unfortunately ended up committing suicide. Oh my gosh. So, you know, the, the, the player, athletes aren't immune from a, a lot of the things that, that general population have. Um, and the third is uh, just organic diseases, the medications that they're taking, recreational uh-huh. or, other, or otherwise. Mm-hmm. All of those go into a package, a, 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 a medical package to, to, that affects the player's sleep. So if the only thing you focus in on is turning the lights off and making the room cool. You're wasting your time. You, the players need a baseline medical analysis that looks at sleep disorders, mental disorders, and organic diseases. Okay. I mean, it's the same thing. If you think about it on the physical side, you wouldn't 
dream of just handing a player a, a workout schedule unless you know what right. shape he's in, what his issues are. Exactly. Right? So it's exactly the same with sleep. That's really interesting because that's that. I mean, that's exactly the way with like as we're seeing with any kind of player personal development. It's got to be customized. It can't just be okay. You get this, and everybody's the same because not everybody's the same. So that's that's really cool to hear that, man. All right. And so that's what really drew me to the work at Stanford University by Dr. Murray Sohain. Mm-hmm. He's the head of two departments. He he is this, one of the smartest, most amazing men I've ever met in my life. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll give you a little bit of background on him and, and, and why I, I think yeah. he does this so brilliant. Okay. He's, he's a medical doctor. He's a neurologist. He's a uh, psychiatrist. Jeez. He's he he has PhDs in biology and mathematics and computer science. Oh my gosh! Literally the smartest man ever to grace the earth. He's he created an artificial intelligence program that we use today, that you can get on your smartphone, you can get on a, a tablet, your computer, or over the phone, and talk to this computer. And within anywhere from thirty minutes to an hour, it can completely diagnose you, not just tell you that problem, <laughs> diagnose you for sleep disorders, mental disorders, and organic diseases, and give you a full picture. Of your 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 health, wow! It is stunning technology. Okay, I gotta check. That. <laughs> I gotta check that out. Is there any way, uh, like the general public, can check that out? Can do that? You, he has a website, okay. but it's 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 a research website. The product is called Sleep Eval, like sleep evaluation. Yep. Right, and so he he go on and check it out. It's, it's it brilliant. And so, what one of the reasons I left my company fatigue science that that deals with sleep watches and the, some of the military planning software was to work with Maurice O'Hyatt and help him take it from a, a phone product into a, a into a, uh, a commercial product available on smartphones and, and others. In fact, we're just starting to roll it out to uh, sports clinics in California this week. This week? Okay. I'll test yeah. it. If you need a tester, I'm on it. Let me know. <laughs> That's yeah. Cool. We're, and, and, you know, and, and, and so we've had a, a lot of interest and quite frankly, it scares the heck out of the medical profession because I it's bet. so accurate. Right? Yeah. So why spend, you know, $2,500 or $3,000 to go get a sleep study in an overnight sleep lab when you can get it for $50 on your smartphone? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. You're going to, yeah. You're changing the game of sleep basically. Yeah. It's, it, and, 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 and a, and a clear understanding of of creating a baseline for players. Right? Yeah, yeah. And and so and we're very conscious and uh, about uh, managing the data and who gets access to the data. You know, th- you know, there are HIPAA requirements. There are all kinds of uh, right. state and federal rules around who gets access to to that data. Um, and so we're very conscious about that. Um, mm-hmm. and, and there's some papers written on it. Um, and so people are interested. I'm, you know, I can pass on some of that as well to them. Um, but yeah, so you, you, teams when teams get involved in in sleep, if they want to get seriously involved in in uh, maximizing sleep and maximizing performance, it's a process. They have to yeah. think carefully about it from a legal perspective, from a medical perspective, and it, it's 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 not a silver bullet. It's not something you're going to just uh, you know buy a couple of pamphlets and hand them out or bring in a speaker and, and, right. and forget about it. You know you're just wasting your time and money. If you want to get into this, you got to get you got to jump into the deep end of the pool. Man. Yeah. That's that's awesome. All right. I'm gonna have to connect you to a lot of NBA people, and we're gonna see the quality of play next season in the NBA so much higher level based on this right here. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and I think there are incre- incremental changes, right? You can yeah. win a few extra games yeah. on the road, and and part of it is 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 learning not only for the teams but for the league. Exactly. Yep. Patrick Byrne bringing it. I tell you what. I'm ready for the sleep eval thing to be up and going. Talking to Patrick just juices me up to track my sleep to the absolute max. Uh, I'm a self-improvement nut, as you all know, and if I can know my sleep stats every night, yeah, I'm all in. Our sponsor this week on the podcast, we got a new one for you. It's Ample. About to blow your mind right here. All right, so there's a lot of meal replacements you all know out there on the market, but none like this. And trust me, I'm very picky when it comes to this. So each meal comes in a bottle, ready, ready to go, and is designed to give you sustenance without the energy crash. Ample contains the perfect amount of protein, healthy fats, fiber, 
pre and probiotics, every green you could basically imagine. Like, listen to this. Wheatgrass, ashwagandha, Jerusalem artichoke, macadamia nut oil. And if I kept reading all the goodness packed into this bottle, we'd never get back to the podcast. And even better news than all that good, healthy stuff, it tastes great. I blend mine every day with ice to get it super thick and basically make it to taste like ice cream that way. Chocolate ice cream, pretty much. And I'm not even exaggerating. Healthy chocolate ice cream. Are you kidding me? Check them out at AmpleMeal.com. I'll get you guys a code here soon as well so we can save bundles on it and make you have it be your go-to meal of the day as well. I literally look forward to it as much as I do coffee. And that's saying a lot. As you guys know, I love coffee. This will also be linked in the show notes too. Three-pointer time. All right, get your jumpers ready. My three points for the week are my workouts to stay in shape while not spending all day in the gym and actually being excited to work out. The worst thing, or one of the worst things I think is when people say they hate to exercise. Why? You can make it fun. It doesn't have to be a chore. And once it becomes a chore, then that's time you got to switch it up. If you can make it a fun part of your day and something you look forward to, that's just a huge win. Here are my three favorite that I try to incorporate every week. Number three, yoga. Absolutely love it. And no, I'm not a long bearded yogi, anything like that. I hit it for about 10 to 15 minutes a day. It's all you need. I like to mix in deep breathing through my nose with it too. Just gets me super peaceful, relaxed, better mobility. Gives me more energy through the day. It's a great way to start your day to attack the day. Number two, high intensity interval training but with a purpose and things you like to do. It's quick. It's efficient. I don't know. Go run five to 10 sprints, throw some tires around, lift a few heavy objects, creating your own workouts, the fun part of it. You don't have to go to some CrossFit gym and do one of those way over the top intense workouts that are no fun. It's have fun creating your own workout. Keep it short, keep it intense a couple times a week and you're golden. Number three, play your sport. Just think about this. As kids, we all love to get outside and play something, anything. So why's that got to stop? Just because we're grown, we're not kids, we can't play anymore? Bogus. I love getting up and down on the basketball court, getting at it on the tennis court, basically anything that's competition, not named golf. And I'm all in. So basically what I'm saying is get your kid's spirit back, go out there and play. There it is, three pointers of the week, yoga, high intensity interval training, and play. Overall, make it fun, make exercise enjoyable, definitely doesn't have to be a chore. All right, let's get back at the second half of the podcast with Patrick Byrne, and he is going to bring to you how you can get the best sleep, the amount of hours you should be getting, how to take the perfect nap, just basically more in-depth science, awesome learning on sleep and helping you become the best version of you and make you really sleepy. Okay, that was terrible. Patrick, take it away. I kind of, I kind of, it kind of looks like it's where analytics was maybe like 10 years ago where they'd, they were just introducing it. They'd have the numbers, but people would just have numbers and not know really how to apply. Oh. Oh, I, I totally agree with that. That was I, I, when I was working in Australia with the uh, West Coast Eagles in the AFL uh-huh. down there. They had and and they have a lot. They do a lot of sports science down there and have for many years, yeah. probably ten years ahead of what we do here, mm-hmm. because they actually teach it in their universities. But when, when I was there, they, I was introduced to their sports scientists down there, and they showed me like stacks and stacks and stacks of numbers and data, uh, you know, motion. Uh, GPS stuff, nutritional stuff, everything. And I go, wow. that's really nice. What are you doing with it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you doing with it? And so I said, it's kind of like shrugged their shoulders. Well, we're collecting the data. I said, well, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. And how do you implement it? It's been the same with analytics. Like you can see a guy coming off a ball screen to the right on a Thursday afternoon uh, game on the road. But like, what are you going to put? Like, how does that guy understand of how he's going to improve on those numbers. All the numbers are great, but they can just make your head explode if all you see is numbers, numbers. Got to have that plan, that baseline like you talked about. That's big time. Right. And you got and, and it has to be individualized for the player. Exactly. Because, mm-hmm. you know, people's, people sleep need, you know, it's, it's, it's within certain parameters, right? I mean, there are only so many, you know, two-foot-tall adults in the world and 
you know, so many right. eight foot tall adults in the world, we're all within certain ranges and sleep's very much the same way. You know, there's, and so if it's helpful for the players not to beat themselves up if they're not getting nine or 10 hours of sleep, because they may in fact be able to perform perfectly well with seven hours of sleep. Okay, interesting. Yeah. See, you, all right, you touched on the point of hours of sleep, and I know the audience out there is dying to know, and I know everyone is, what is the ideal amount of sleep? And I know it's got to be, I mean, it's customized too, but if, if the audience can take something away <laughs> yeah. from it, they're like, okay, it's sure. what I get. Yeah, and, and and that sounds like a really simple question, yeah. but it's not. It's I not yeah. because it, here's the thing about sleep. So when you sleep, so the timing of your sleep, is yep. critical to the quality of your sleep. And qu- sleep quality is probably more po- more important than sleep duration. Yeah. So you can get nine hours of poor sleep or seven hours of good sleep. Right? Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's why it's important to get a baseline so you really understand what your sleep patterns look like. And then, and then you can say, okay, now I know that I'm a good sleeper or that – Okay, I've got sleep apnea. So I yeah. need to get that fixed, right? Because it doesn't matter if I'm in bed for 10 hours, I'm not getting the, I'm not getting the recovery that I need. Right. And that's a great point. How how would you say like if you could pick um the best ways to get the best sleep? Like how do you make that quality as high level as it can be? Right. Cuz a lot of people won't be able to get the 8 to 9 hours each night. Sure. Uh, yeah, so a couple of points. So assuming you mm-hmm. don't have any med- medical issues around sleep, you're yes, a, right. a, a, a normal person. Yep. So the the thing is to try to – it's very hard during the season, but certainly off-season you can do this, is try to create a, a fairly consistent bedtime. Yep. So um, that's important. But also uh, make your room as dark as you can and as cool as you can and as quiet as you can. So that's very difficult in hotel rooms. Yeah. You you can at home you can put a you know blackout blinds you can lock your door you can talk to your family you can get you know it's you have much more control over that so I've got a few tips for the hotels for one thing nice. um, and so what I do when I travel I've traveled all over the world is to the same thing I unplug everything right everything that's got lights on it the, particularly the alarm clocks I got my smartphone right if I want to set an alarm I can set an alarm. I don't need these big bright lights, so I try to eliminate. I even unplug the little mini fridges <laughs> if they're if they're noisy and there's lights. Yeah, on them, yeah, right. And a lot of hotels now are starting to put in blackout blinds, but the problem is you always have gaps in in the drapes. Right? So what I do is actually travel with a handful of these big black paper clips. Ooh, okay. And just throw them in a suitcase, and you get to a hotel, and you can see the, you know the light coming through, and I just clip the drapes together. Mm-hmm. Right, cut, yep. cuts off the yep. cuts off the the the, uh, the light there. Um, you can take I take towels and I put them under the door at the front door, so because you always have a lot of light coming yeah. under the door. Right. Um, the other thing you can travel with is I and I, I know quite a few players that actually do this is travel with these little kids' night lights. Okay. Right? These little sort of Snoopy night light things, <laughs> right? and then and you can put you put it in the bathroom. Right. And so when you get up in the night and you want to go to the bathroom, you don't have to turn on the lights. Oh out. man, that's that's a really good one right there, especially even at home too. Nice. Right. So what happens? What happens when you uh, get exposed to light when you're trying to sleep, right? Mm-hmm. Or you're sleep, you wake up, you get exposed to light, and you're trying to, you try to get back to sleep. What light does is it prevents the, the your body from producing melatonin, which is the sleepy hormone. Mm-hmm. And so it starts inhibiting that production of that and makes it harder to get back to sleep. Wow, interesting, man. Now, those are those are really good tips. I'm taking those. I travel all over the world too, and I right. need that. Yep. If you hold your hand up about a foot from your face, mm-hmm. and you can see your hand, it's not dark enough. Oh wow. Okay, that's a that's a great tip right there. Great test for that. Um, what is? How about this? Uh, what, what's uh, like the best? set up for sleep you could get like if you're saying okay tonight i want to get my best night's sleep i've ever gotten just for just for the general audience out of the out there what what would a day in the life or a night in the life of sleep look like for you well again it, it, it's you know the best sleep is really when you have uh, a consistent bed time and wake up time mm-hmm. um, you got a, a comfortable bed and that's very personal i've had players call me from all over the world and say, my wife and I are out. I'm serious. You can't believe how many times I've had it. We're out buying a mattress. What should we get? <laughs> and I go, you know, I go, you know what? They're very personal. 
Yeah. Uh, so, but make sure your bed is comfortable. Right? Yep. And and um, and also, if if you're sleeping with a spouse, right, or a partner, um, they may have a sleep disorder. Right? And I've heard a lot of players complain that my wife's got sleep apnea; she's keeping me up at night. Right. And so, it's p- part of it is knowing you know your partners, and and. Uh, also blue light. So when you're working uh-huh. with computers and uh-huh. and uh, uh, laptops and smartphones, they give off blue light. And blue light is uh, really bad for, for um, uh, melatonin, right? It yep. makes it much harder to get to sleep. And so you have that issue where you, you know, you're know you trying to get to sleep by 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night, but you're up to one because you're, you've been on the smartphone. So most recommendation is, you know, if you can put that down for an hour before you actually want to go to sleep, um, then, you know, then you're, you're much better off and much easier to try to get to sleep. And what I say to athletes as well is, you know, you plan your vacation, you plan all kinds of things in your life. You should include sleep as, as a plan. Like, yeah, when am I going to go to sleep? Great. Don't you, don't just do it when that's you just, great. you know, when you're tired, but yep. plan for it. Right. Yep. And, and, it, and it's create the right sleep environment. Like, you know, uh, read, reading books is way better than watching television because your brain gets stimulated by the visuals on television or on your smartphone or on the internet. And once your brain starts getting uh, stimulated, it's much harder for it to calm down. That's a, yep. I'm, Really good points, man. I love that, and know the audience will too. Um, what's what's like the breakdown difference in REM compared to deep sleep? Is it more like these are the numbers that we have? How do we yeah. look in yeah. depth on how do I get the most deep sleep? What's the ideal deep sleep? Yeah, great question. You know, and and because mm-hmm. there's a lot of these gadgets out there that say, oh, we can measure your REM sleep, yeah. we can measure your deep sleep. Yeah. My answer is who cares? Like you have <laughs> zero, you have zero, zero control over that. Okay, your brain, your brain will decide. That, so sleep is in, in, it goes in stages. Okay, so it starts out in a lighter sleep, it goes down to two, three, four deep sleep, and then back up mm-hmm. to REM sleep. And that cycle normally lasts about ninety minutes. And so REM is, of course, the light sleep where you're dreaming, and then it goes back and repeats that cycle four or five times a night. You have zero control. Your brain decides on its own sleep needs. And it could jump you right into deep sleep or it could jump you into REM sleep. Wow. It totally decides. Nobody's going to lay in bed and say, gee, I think I'm going to get more REM sleep tonight. You know? so yeah. that, kind of, that, that kind of data is, is completely useless. The only, the, only, in, the only thing that data is actually useful for is for a sleep doctor to decide whether you have a sleep disorder or not. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Because all phases of sleep are important. So people go, oh, you need to get more REM sleep. You need, and they, and they, you know, they kind of fixate on that. It's, it's complete nonsense. Your, your, your brain decides what it yeah. needs to, 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 to fully recover from, you know, from your sleep loss. And what I say to them, like, which is more important, your, or, you know, your, your liver or your heart, right? I right. Mean, right. They're, right. All, they're, they're all important. All the stages <laughs> of sleep are important. Right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. What, what are the stages, if I, if I could ask you? What are the breakdown? Well, they, they, they in, in broad, broad terms, they break it down into either REM sleep or non-REM sleep. Okay. So, and REM sleep is, 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 if you look at your brain waves, your EEGs during uh, REM sleep, that is, uh, it was called rapid eye movement sleep. That's yep. when you dream and your brain waves look exactly like you're awake. Exactly. Interesting. It's almost indistinguishable because you're very close to being awake. But what happens when you REM sleep, there's a little thing in your brain that locks your body. So you physically cannot move when you're dreaming. Wow. So that and and it's, there's this uh, dis, uh, disorder called REM sleep disorder where that is uh, doesn't work, and so people thrash out their dreams, right, and hurt their partners and hurt themselves. Oh so it's a very serious, it's a very serious condition. But for yeah. most of us, uh, your brain just freezes. So it's so, and, and everything else is just a non-REM sleep. So in other words, it goes through. Uh, you get into a deeper and deeper sleep, and then you come back out of the, out of a deeper sleep. Right, and then you get into REM sleep, and then you go back cycles back into the deeper sleeps. Interesting. And, and ideal sleep cycles is, would that be um, like a ninety minute sleep cycle? Getting six of those a night is that is that ideal? Well, if, yeah. If you do, yeah, you do the math. It's usually uh, you know four or five cycles. Okay, um, that's that's pretty normal that you don't have. But again, you don't have any control over that. Right. Your brain, your brain, your brain decides that. Um, 
And the interesting thing about the sleep cycles is they're not all equal. And so Mm -hmm. what happens if you're you're only getting six hours instead of, say, eight hours of sleep, the REM sleep, which is actually good, is for the most part back-ended. So you get the vast majority of your REM sleep near the last couple of hours of your sleep patterns Mm -hmm. and not at the beginning. So if you're only getting six versus eight hours of sleep, you you know, uh, your brain's just not getting the REM sleep that it needs. And so your brain tries to compensate for that. Um, And and one of the most important things about sleep is is consistency and having, I think the athletes really understand how long it takes to recover from sleep loss. So we know from a, a lot of studies done with actually measuring simple reaction time that it takes, if you're awake for 24 straight hours, it's going to take you five to six nights of good sleep to fully recover oh your reaction gosh. time. So it's not a one for one. And that's what actually demonstrating that the players starts to turn their head around a little bit. I think a lot of them think, oh, yeah, well, we had a back to back game. You know, I'll go, you know, I was up till three in the morning. I'll just sleep in the more. I'll be good to go. You're not. Jeez. Yeah, that's what everybody thinks, too. Right. But it's, it, we can you can demonstrate that with simple uh, what's called PVT or psychomotor vigilance tasks, simple reaction time tests. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a great educational tool for the players to go, oh, you know, and the great thing about the, I mean, it's just like a little Game Boy, right? You, right. you, uh, and a light shows up randomly and you have to react to it, right? And so you can fake being bad, but you can't fake being good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that quote. <laughs> what about, uh, what about naps? I mean, everybody loves, yeah, loves getting naps. Is that, uh, efficient? Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of napping, but people nap for uh, largely because they're not sleeping well at night. Yeah, mm-hmm. and but naps, and, and again, there's some really good studies that show if you nap even for 20 minutes, it'll increase your reaction time. Wow! Right. And so, vast majority of the players that I work with, certainly in National Hockey League and in, in the NBA, um, nap in the afternoon. Yeah. And particularly, but usually uh, before games, right? and, uh, and and that's that's very helpful. The, the downside to napping, and it's a bit like coffee, right? You can get a good little kick from coffee, uh, but if you take it too close to bedtime, yeah, it's going to affect your sleep. Right? And it's it's the same with same with napping. Right? Yeah. You nap too close to your bedtime, and the other thing about napping is, uh, and I'm a bad napper because I have what's called, I get what's called sleep inertia. So you wake mm-hmm. up groggy. And oh, it felt yeah. like crap, oh, crap yeah. for about half an hour, 45 minutes. And, and so what happens is during that groggy period, your reaction time is, is really poor, right? Mm-hmm. And so it takes a while for you to, your brain to get rid of the fog uh, and to get back into it. So, you know, napping, if you, if you can nap for even less than 20 minutes or half an hour, you're not going to get into that really deep sleep that causes you to be groggy when you wake up. Because if you wake up in a, in a, in a deep sleep, you're going to be groggy for a while. That that's interesting. That is what I find. Like it's like I'm just plugging myself in for ten, fifteen minutes, and if I get that, then I'm I have way more energy than if I'd sleep like an hour or two hour nap. Even though hour and two hour nap are are a lot of fun, and I can do that on on the weekends for sure. But that ten that like ten to fifteen minute plug in is just really effective. I found right, and some of the teams are actually th- talking about, and some of them have actually implemented, put, try to put in, you know, nap rooms into their, yeah. into their facilities. Um, and, and, you know, and I have to remember that if you remember the story when Ken Griffey Jr. was uh, playing for Seattle and he went down and he, he went out through the dugout into the dressing room and fell asleep on the, on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, and so they went down to call him up because I think he was a, he was a DH and they found him sleeping down. There was this big, big controversy wrote, but, yeah. but, and, but teams I think are having a, a, a different attitude around it now instead of seeing sleep as a bad thing they're seeing sleep as a good thing you know and if and if him and any other players find that need to, to sleep so badly yeah. you know during a need game it. let alone during practice there's something seriously wrong <laughs> i completely agree man seriously that's that's uh that's a telltale sign for sure man that's awesome i thank you all this information is very, very valuable. I mean, I mean, your time is very valuable. So I could talk to you literally for all day about this. Um, what, what was like the next frontier of sleep? I know you talked about the artificial intelligence and um, the tests you guys are doing. What would you say is coming up next for just sleep in general? I, I think you know every day I see new research papers looking at, uh, at I'm trying to understand sleep and, and understand yeah. its function 
function within our, our body. And the way I tend to think about it is, is that um, uh, sleep is such an, an, an important brain function. Right? And our brain is like a, our, our CPU. Mm-hmm. And it controls everything in our body, our hormones, our, our, our breathing, our heart rate, our reaction time. The, the brain controls everything. And so you start taking away and, and, and uh, hurting uh, the, an important brain function, it's going to affect everything within your body. There's, you can't escape it. Right. There's no, nothing good about poor sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and so I think, it, you know, in, in the future, they're going to just discover more and more of that and it'll be sort of an ed- educational part. But I, but I think the future really is um, understanding the, um, the, the comorbidities, understanding that sleep is a, a complex process that involves yeah. everything from mental health to diet, um, you know, to exercise, and to kind of get that full picture so that individuals can actually uh, start developing uh, treatments. Right and, and and systems and so there are a lot of people that can go out there and tell you you need to get more sleep and 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 uh, um, you know and sleep's important but it's the solution side where the research has to be, has to take place. Yeah, they're really devo- if you go to your doctor today and, and tell them you got it and they think you have a sleep problem, they're going to either send you to a sleep lab or they're going to give you a sleeping pill. Right. Right. Yeah. And and so the, the the solutions are pretty thin on 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 the sleep side. And so that need, that needs to be improved. And, and, I, and I'm, we're starting to see more of that, but I'll, I'll, I'll really a quick story. One of the guys mm-hmm. I interviewed for my book is getting Mike Winters. who's a major league baseball crew chief and umpire. He's been, I think he's been around like 25 years and um, he's, he's got some interesting stories. I always find baseball umpires hilarious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he, so, so he goes, yeah, he says, so the, um, so he says major league baseball brought in these, this sleep expert to talk to all the umpires at the beginning of the season a couple of mm-hmm. years ago. And he goes, he goes, he, so he writes this in an email to me. He goes, yeah, so he told us that sleep is important. So he writes in, in brackets, duh. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, then he, so he says, then the sleep expert said to us, you know, we need to get more sleep. So he writes in the in brackets, duh, again. <laughs> so so I, he says, so I raised my hand and I asked the question. I said, uh, excuse me, doctor. He said, um, how can I get to sleep faster after a game without drinking 27 Miller Lights? You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's the key. Right. right. And, but yeah. that, that really illustrated to yeah. me, uh, you know, that – that it's the solution side you right. know, on the in individual solution side that needs to be worked on. And in order to do that, you have to have a complete medical picture of why the person is sleeping the way, why they should, you know, yep. in the way they should. Right. Yep. Man, that, that's awesome. It's all customization and, um, it's basically personal. It, it's not cookie cutter, one size fits all for sleep. Like it is the everything life development too. Um, if you could, uh, uh, leave leave people with like advice on um, just the best way to get to sleep, or just just some parting advice that you'd give to them and the whole sleep game in general. Any quick uh, quick notes you'd have? Uh, yeah, I, I would just be cautious about okay. the information you hear yep. and read read about on the internet, and particularly around gadgets. Right? All right. Gadgets that claim to measure your sleep, gadgets that measure that claim to measure the stages of sleep, gadgets that claim to help you get to sleep faster. Um, a lot of, you know, whether they're nutritional supplements or whatever, there's just a lot of garbage out, out there. And so what I challenge teams and athletes to do is whether it's supplements or sleep gadgets mm-hmm. is ask a hard question. Is it validated? Is it independently validated? Show me that it works. Don't tell me that it works. Don't show me the bling. Right. <laughs> de- de- demonstrate, demonstrate where the research is that shows this actually produces the results you're telling me it, it does. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I got to get you with all the NBA teams. I, I need to hire you as my personal sleep coach. This has been just, <laughs> man, this has been just a true blessing. I've, been, I've learned a ton. Learned a ton about sleep. They even learned about the NA- NBA and NHL. Why that? That that came to be. This is just really, really good stuff, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Anytime. How how can we follow everything that you're doing? Like uh, just any yeah. way we can follow you. Yeah. Well, you could stalk me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said Vancouver. Uh, no, okay, I've always wanted yeah, to come yeah. up to Vancouver. Yeah, I yeah. got you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I do. I do some social media. I'm not a. I, I'm an. Old, I'm an oldie guy. I'm not. But I have. I have. I have a, I have a Twitter account. It's okay. at Sleep Sports. At Sleep Sports. 
Awesome. So I'm happy to jump on that and answer questions, whatever people want to do. And LinkedIn, you know, I have a okay. big LinkedIn following. I have nearly probably 8,000 uh, athletes and uh, sports teams uh, globally on it. And so we do a lot of communication on there as well. So it's just my name. It's just Pat, Pat Byrne, B-Y-R-N-E at LinkedIn. And I'll connect, connect with me. I'll help you to, you know, ha- actually, I can answer your questions. Perfect. And we'll link to all those in the show notes and everything for sure. Um, yeah, I'll be stalking. No one else out there is allowed to, just me. <laughs> <laughs> is there any any uh, foundations or anything we can su- support you on that people can help out with too? Any causes, anything? Uh, you know, I, I not really. I, okay. I mean, I think some of the, the, the particularly the, the mental health issues amongst athletes i think is critical you know particularly retired retired players i think it's an it's incredibly important issue for you know the national football league foundation national hockey league um, all of the leagues have yeah. uh, found foundations that really help their their veterans um and uh, you know they they struggle uh, you know it's it you know you're you're a great star and you got 20 30,000 people screaming at you every night and then your career's over right? yeah yep. <laughs> right and you're at home watching tv by yourself and you're you know you're <laughs> family <laughs> and so that, so that, i mean there there there's a you know a lot of particularly mental health um uh work that needs to be done for those those folks yeah well thank you man thank you so much for your time i i, I gotta tell you like quick story just is my life talent my number one talent in life is sleeping on airplanes i went to i had a flight recently to australia it was a 17 hour flight to sydney slept 14 of the hours wasn't even tired <laughs> they woke me up they they woke me up like yeah we were gonna wake you up there we thought you dropped into a coma so whatever i'm business, doing in my sleep you, 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 fl- you flying business class no i wasn't uh-uh. uh, i was crunched uh, back in uh. In the regular, yeah, uh, man, that's a tell. That's a tell. I've flown to Australia um, not a million times, but yeah. a lot. Um, and I, I, after my first trip in COVID, I can't sleep sitting up. I was, it was, I was a wreck. Um, <laughs> I started. I did. The client started just paying for business class, right? You can get a bed and, and sleep on it, right? And yep. but going yep. to Australia yep. is is e- you know is easier travel because it's east to west travel. Right? That's true, right? And, but coming home, I would just be a wreck for five days. <laughs> It, yeah, I find that too. It takes me so long to get back into the swing of things when I come back. Yeah. It's crazy. And you know, and, and this actually, we didn't talk about this a little bit because we most of the NBA um, and most of the leagues we deal with are, are you know continental North American travel. But the teams now are starting to go to China. Yeah. They're starting to go to Australia. They're yeah. starting to England, and th- those are really Im- important. Uh, uh, trips that the team needs to plan ahead for in terms of when they travel, when they play the games, and how they deal with the recovery when the players get back. Um, tired players are going to be injured players. Good point. Yep, for sure. Man, well, hey, thank you so much uh, for this. I, I really appreciate it. In any way I can ever help you out, you know, you know I'm here for you. Appreciate me. Teach me to shoot a basket. <laughs> there you go. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> Big time thanks to Patrick Byrne for coming on the podcast. Hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Have you ever been so excited to go to sleep tonight? And now you know how to own the sleep game. Very blessed to have one of the best in the world in his field on the show. Learning from the best, growing to be our best. That's what the game of life is all about. I'd love to hear from you all out there. Like my man down under, Hamish. Seriously, hit me. Give me feedback on how we can keep making this podcast better. Like topics you guys want me to focus on, any high-level performers out there that you think I should bring on, let me know and we'll get them on. For one of these episodes coming up, I'm thinking about doing an audience question and answer. I think that'd be fun. Um, Let me know. You know what? The coolest thing about this podcast, I think, it's not just me talking to you. It's us talking together. We're basically hanging around the campfire, roasting marshmallows, making us some s'mores, listening to someone play guitar that really isn't very good, but we act like they are. Yeah, you all know what I'm talking about. Anyways, we're family, game of life family, family. Thank you so much for listening and making this possible. Until next week, hope you all have a great week. And remember, it's all about the journey. David Nurse, Game of Life, signing off.